Are you ready to get your feet wet? Because this is The Knowledge Pool, hosted by Gathering Information. We're here to bring you a casual conversation between friends about everything to do with collecting, trading, and playing Magic the Gathering. I am Tams. I am Steph. And I am Laura. So put on your bathing suits and dive right into The Knowledge Pool. Hello and welcome to the Knowledge Pool, episode 30. I am your host, mostly congested step, <laughs> along with my uh, female compatriots, Tams. Who is mostly healed. And Laura. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm Goldilocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sadly I was the last one to get sick and the first one to feel better, so... Sadly for... You sadly guys. for who exactly? Basically, uh, Step and I came down with the plague last week, so yes. we could not... Neither of us were able to speak to record last week's podcast, That's right. and then Tams came down ill pretty much the day over the weekend, yeah. Yeah. which Friday. was super unfortunate because not only was it, you know, pre-release, so we had a lot to talk about, but also, this is right in the middle of our moving, which is why you might find it a little more echoey. Yeah, the, the room's pretty empty right now because we're in the middle, we just haven't moved my computer so that we could podcast. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're not going to... Talk about too many extra topics today. No. Either we're just gonna kind of run through things. Um, so first up, the news. I'm sad because I also had a bunch of news topics that we were going to talk about last week, but instead we're not going to. Okay. Um, instead, is there anything that like needs needs talking about? Yeah. So there's one thing that uh, Tams in particular talk about, which isn't necessarily for our standard players, ex- but um, basically it was just a change to the communication rules at. Um, I think Ariel, competitive Ariel, something like that. Um, anyways, there's a very piratey themed article on the mothership about it, so you should definitely <laughs> check it out if you play with basically any older cards. Yeah. But um, the point of it was that if you're if you play a card and it has one particular effect, so the example given is Path to Exile, so it exiles a creature, um, but it also has a secondary optional effect, which for Path to Exile is. Whoever got their creature exile can go and search for a basic land and put it on the battlefield. You, as the person casting this spell, must verbally confirm with the player if they are choosing to use the optional clause. So, for example, I go, I am casting Path to Exile on your creature, Tams. And you go, oh, well, I guess it's exiled. I can't simply assume, and by assume, of course, I mean move the game along quickly so that you don't realize that you've missed anything. Um, I must instead say, are you choosing not to go get a land? Yeah, do you want to go get a land? Yes. Yeah. And most people that I've played against have done that. Absolutely. Because um, that's not really the way you want to win. No. Is by no. your opponent just forgetting or, or not, not being knowing, familiar. not knowing the card. Plus, yeah. I mean, path is super good, and that's usually why these cards are, are played anyway, that even with the added trigger they're super good so well yeah and the point is is that in most it. of the formats that path is played very few people are running basic lands basics anyway. anyway so so yeah. so the thing is though is that this doesn't apply to cards where the you get to choose whether or not you do something is the entire point of the card so for something like spell pierce where you are countering a spell unless the opponent plays two well non creature spell unless your opponent plays pays two extra mana you don't have to cast Spell Pierce and say, are you choosing not to pay the two? Because that's the entire point of casting the Spell Pierce is forcing them to have to pay the two. Right. And again, most people that I know of, be like, Spell Pierce, counter that unless you pay two, you know, or something like that. Yeah, or Spell Pierce, you're top there. Right. Or um, something like that. So originally when I heard that they were making this change, I was like, no, this is stupid. Why? <laughs> and then I heard like i guess in the article they say because a lot of people play with foreign cards or full art you know Mm -hmm. textless cards i'm like oh yes absolutely no that makes sense good and not only that but you know if unless you're playing it online a lot of the times you're just playing across the table and unless you're really good at reading upside down and are wearing your glasses you know or are um, very familiar with the format that you're playing in right which you definitely will be once you have some practice you know once you played against path to exile a bunch you will just remember it has the extra clause but if you're just getting into it this is just a way to make it so that you have the same fair chances that everybody has yeah for the most part i like anything that makes things clearer in general Mm -hmm. and i think this is what that is that's that is 
kind of the, yeah the yeah. whole point is just to make sure that everyone's aware of what's happening in the game which yeah. is i think the best way to go about it so, so yes yeah. um, kind of it for the news uh there's an interesting um interview about richard garfield available on the interwebs if you're interested in finding out what he's been doing after magic I haven't read that yet. I should go and... Or is it a like live interview or a... I believe so. Cool. I'll have to go and check that out. So, um, yeah, just a bunch of other just random things, but nothing super important. So instead, we're just going to jump huh. into the, you know, multi-hour long topic that is what have we been up to in Magic lately? Tons and tons of stuff. Oh my goodness. So, like, first off, I guess, we, we know that uh, Ixalan has just... Uh, been released and we're super crazy about um, the new set but we had a whole week before it was launched that there were other things happening that we want to kind of talk about a little bit yep so just taking it chronologically i guess there was the rainbow draft yep Uh, so mm -hmm. we had two pods of six yes so not only is rainbow draft really interesting because signals are weird because nobody knows what they're doing and cards are hard to evaluate and also, you're drafting packs from completely different sets. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it was in a six-person pod, which makes things interesting in a different way. Because you see more of the same packs, and you get less, you know, rares and uncommons per... Right, and it also gives you more information about what everybody else at the table is doing. True. If you have a good enough memory to remember what you passed. So, way back two weeks ago, we kind of talked about what our strategies yes, were about we Rainbow Drafts. So, what did we end up doing, Laura? I first picked a Thassa's Emissary. That's the blue one from uh, Theros. Where Seems real good. Where you can uh, enchant a creature with it for six and a blue, I think it is. Or you can just play it for three Five and a blue. Five and a blue. Five yep. and a blue, all right. Or you can just play it for three and a blue, and it's a three, three. And uh, if you are bestowing it, it gives the bestowed creature plus three, plus three. And whenever you hit a player in the face and deal combat damage to them, draw a card. It is super sweet. Mm-hmm. So, I like that card in Cube. I know it's very good. The rare was uh, not garbage. It was Timur at the Murder King, which is a black-red card. So, first of all, it's my two least favorite colors. Second of all, it's not even that good of a card. Yeah. And third of all, first picking a gold rare that's not great is not the best place to start. Yeah, and usually, even in a uh, full block uh, draft, Timuret was the kind of thing that... If you're there, you'll be able to pick him up on the wheel. And he'll yes. be fine in your deck, but Yeah, exactly. Whatever. He's fine. So, anyways, so then I ended up um, getting a fifth pick ethereal armor. I was already in blue. I was pretty sure my, I was going to be in white for my sun color. Look, I don't always end up Esper in rainbow drafts, except that I always end up in Esper in rainbow drafts. So, uh, I picked up ethereal armor. So, that was my second or third enchantment. I was like... You know, there's a bunch of enchantments in Theros. There are some good other enchantments. Blue-white are the colors to be in if you're in enchantments. Let me just see if I can get there. There's nothing else in this pack. Uh, Which very much disappointed Judge John, who was expecting to wheel that card. It was funny. (laughs) He has this on his channel. Yes. um, A little video about the draft, I was directly to his right. Yeah, so if you're interested in more perspectives on the same drafts, you should go and check that out. Yes, and and keep in mind just that I am passing to him impacts one and three, so that'll give you a good idea of what I was taking. So (laughs) anyways, I ended up with uh, seven or eight good, high-quality enchantments. So I had those two already. I got a cast out. I got um, the Extreme Mutation card or whatever Mm -hmm. from uh, Shadows Over Innistrad. Uh, just a couple other, um, I got a choking restraints from shadows as well. So just a lot of like removal nice type of enchantments, which are great because they stay on the battlefield for your ethereal armor, mm. which pumps the creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you have on the battlefield. It counts itself. So by itself for a single white mana, it gives a creature plus one plus one and first strike. And oh, then baby. I almost always was getting plus two or plus three plus three. Um, I had a lot, a fair number of flyers. I had a couple of unblockable creatures, which was kind of the point. Then I would just load them up with, say, an ethereal armor and hit them in the face a couple of times and win mm-hmm. the game. Um, Seems pretty good. It was pretty good. I lost in the first round to the black red Murder King Timurai deck. He, <laughs> he went straight aggressive. Um, he drafted all the two drops. He had uh, what's the card from Ravnica that makes it so that multicolored creatures or. So, Sorry, non-multicolored creatures are unable to block this turn. Ah, uh, yes. And so then also they're, they're a card under, from um, one of the overload cards that gives all of your creatures plus two plus oh. Ugh. So he would just 
get five or six creatures on the battlefield, make them unblockable, and then give them plus two plus zero and win Dynamic the game. Charger or something. Uh, like he ended up, so he ended up going three and zero. I ended yeah. up going two and one. <laughs> so I came in third, which was not bad in a pot of six. Seems pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. My deck was fun. It wasn't the best deck that it could have been. I ended up just actually straight blue white. I had a couple of black splash cards that I chose not to. Uh, go ahead with because I had already a bunch of removal, mostly enchantments. But... Well, I mean, your neighbor was drafting the same thing as you, so. No, she was blue red. The your neighbor on the other side. John. Yeah. He was uh, blue green, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, he got out of white because uh, it was getting cut very hard I by imagine. somebody, and also blue was getting cut hard because I was blue and the person to my right was also blue, so. Anyways, it was, as all rainbow drafts are, chaotic. Yeah. We got a terrible Ravnica card, rare, that was going around the table that everybody had to read for five minutes, because it was all text. Of course. I love those. And, uh... Yeah, you were in a different pod from us. Yes, I was. Just to be clear. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, so it was, it was pretty good. It was it was about what I expect from a rainbow draft. Uh, the aggressive decks tend to have a bit of an edge. Yeah. But yeah. there's also room to do some nonsense if we want. Absolutely. What what was going on in your pod? <laughs> Tams? Uh, I first picked Erebos. As you do, you mono black cube player. So that's this is an <clears throat> interesting conversation, though, because we know that you like black, especially yep. in Theros. Yes. What else was in that pack? Gary. He was also in the pack. The Grey Merchant Vassal. Yes. And here's the thing, though. The, there was only those two cards in black in the pack. Um, Erebos is not going to wheel. It doesn't matter what. There's just no way. It's yes. a god. Yeah. If nothing else, somebody's going to snatch it up for uh, not I, value. But... I, I may have first picked an Urborn because it's worth $20. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Pack yeah. two, even though I wasn't in black. Exactly. I was like, this is technically black fixing in case I end up splashing those cards that I have. <laughs> True. And Gary, while amazing, is generally best seated in a mono black or highly... Oh, yeah. Black deck. Yeah, you want so, a devotion deck for him. So the odds of it coming back were still not good, but slightly higher than Erebos. Yeah, and Erebos I, was okay. not coming back. And I didn't think that we had any in our collection other than the one that's in our cube. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to grab Erebos. I might get Gary on the wheel. So I grabbed him. I did not get him. Somebody else did. But it didn't really matter. I had 13 pieces of removal, if you include Ooh. the couple of... Uh, death touch creatures that I had. I also was doing the whole Orzov thing, and I was oh, um, extort. I was extorting. It's so good in rainbow drafts. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Um, it was a gross, amazing, wonderful deck. I was very proud of it. Um, I went. I played for first and second with mm-hmm. my opponent. We decided to draw. Because we would just play for the, right. the extra pack. And that's when my deck was like, nah, I don't think so. And I didn't get land and didn't get there. But um, it was so much fun. I had a blast. So it was a fun deck to play. Cool. How about you? Okay. Well, I first, I I had three packs, obviously. One of them was Fate Reforged. And I decided to start with that one. Yes, because, tell us why. Um, the Fate Reforged rares tend to be like, bonkers so if there's anywhere you want to open a, a nuts rare it's in fate reforged and i just happen to open a tarka the world render oh, oh, that's which not is a big deal. you know a big six four flying trample double striking dragon yeah what, what for I, seven mana eh, you know um so i figured okay that seems like a pretty good <laughs> place to start um, and then I got past an Edifice of Authority, so sure, why oh, not? Well, That'll yeah. help me get to my big dragon. And then, uh, fifth pick, Thassa's Emissary, Ordeal of Thassa, and I think, like, Voyage's End were all in the same pack or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, that. That's a heck of a pack. And I was like, why is there no blue or, or black or white? That's a lot of blue. Yeah. And it's a lot of good, like, there cannot have been a blue card picked from this pack. Because it would have been one of those three cards. Mm-hmm. So I started to hedge into blue, but it turned out that, that I was not the only one to notice mm-hmm. that. So uh, I ended up back in uh, red-green. And it was a pretty um, interesting deck. I didn't have as much low drop stuff as I'd have liked mm-hmm. to help get to my big dragon. Mm-hmm. But the way it ended up... 
Um, I in uh, I think the second pack or no the first pack I got like very late a two headed Cerberus, That's which the is like one two double striker. Yeah, for one red red. And I'm like, okay, shrug. It's a creature. It'll go in my deck. <laughs> um, How much did you attack somebody with it for that one time? Eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. That's pretty uh, good. He swung in with all, and I'm like, okay, can I? can I actually win here if I just have this one creature? And it turns out, yes, I can swing for 18. Uh, I put... Was that Exaxes? Uh, it was Exaxes. It was um, <laughs> some pump spell, and I sacked the desert, uh, the hash-up oasis, to uh, get his power up to nine and then wasn't it the plus five plus five or something yeah it was the plus five plus five plus the hash app oasis so nine and then double strike is 18 oh, and i did gosh. the same thing with atarka in one game I <laughs> for 18 in the air so i had really explosive yeah uh turns with that deck i ended up going one and two just because it was awkward and sure i could have explosive turns but if I stumbled with mana or if I flooded out, mm -hmm. it was just not too um Yeah, plus you do, need, you do need a curve. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And I thought, yeah. okay, sitting down, a six-person draft pod, this isn't going to be somewhere that I can rare draft. Well, it turns out <laughs> I ended up with like eight rares. Wow. So, yeah. and most of them were in the deck. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, it was the Scourge Walker, the plus five, plus one, and... Uh, mm -hmm. and Trample, is it? Yeah, the Dragon Lords, we had somebody in our pod open the Dragon Lord too, although I didn't play her, and I don't think she actually ended up playing it, because she was in oh, no. green, or she was in blue, red. But um, uh, my third round opponent had uh, Dramoka the Eternal, mm -hmm. which is a flyer that bolsters, and it's really annoying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was and just... Fortunately, I had cast out in all three games... <clears throat> specifically reserved for Dragon Lord Dramoka, but that's pretty good. Yeah. The Dragon Lords are very good, oh, but yeah. and they're Elder Dragons, which is interesting. But um, I I preferred for most of them their past form, their Fate Reforged form. Like Atarka World Render just seemed meaner than Dragon Lord Atarka. I guess absolutely. I don't know. Well. I don't know. I, I like, because, like, Dragon Lord Jamoka has lifelink and yep. stops your opponents from casting spells on your turn. The and Dragon Lord of... Atarka just wipes the board. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're powerful cards. But I liked, I think it was the, all of them did something when you attack with a dragon. Yeah, I feel like that made them fairer. Yeah. To be honest. Because I, cause I played uh, both Dragon Lord Jamoka and Dragon Lord Atarka in standard mm -hmm. when they were in standard. And just, like, landing one on the board mm. you were happy yeah that's true whereas with the fate reforms once you had, you to, had to survive yeah. for your, your i was just happy i brought home a fatal push yeah yeah, was, yeah you did that was pretty cool yeah. our second last week of fatal push promos yeah. mm -hmm. all right shall we move on to the pre-release the pre-release i want to i want to start this okay done, all right done we need to do a little shout out to our um lgs owner because his pre-releases are just amazing. They just keep getting better and better. This and time, bigger and bigger. There were seventy <laughs> people at this. He rented. There, there were eighty. Eighty. Sorry, there were eighty. 80 yeah. people at this. So he rented a second room, and in the second room, it just happened to come with these little tables and these. Um, oh, yeah. Four, oh. four little tables with, yes. with executive chairs. Executive chairs, which are so comfortable. So he decided to do a draw before we came to pick some people who would sit at this table and their opponents would come to them for the whole day. Right. So, so those those four lucky people just got to sit there and have the Reign supreme. And, and it was a... a chair, and, and then there were less people in the room, so the air conditioning was a lot stronger. Oh, and like a pre-assigned permanent feature match. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So... Um, my big problem with anything with a lot of people is with my social anxiety. I have a lot of problems. I get really stressed out by the sheer volume of people and the closeness. Trying to get past people to get to your seat, people pushing. and I mean, they don't push, but, you know, the nudging. And, and they're usually, really cramped. usually packed in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and it really makes it much harder for me to play well. 
Well, I lucked out and drew one of the spots. As, oh, did you? Yes, That's as so did lucky. Laura. I did. That's right. So we sat in the air-conditioned room all day. <laughs> it was great. And so, by the by the time like round four came around, half the people had dropped out. So yeah. uh, it was very quiet in there. Oh, it was so nice. It so was, that was, was a really beautiful. nice little touch. Everybody thought that was really cool. And those who came to play us got to sit in, yes. in the comfort of the comfy chairs. Yeah. So... Just that in and of itself. These little touches are just so nice. Yes, he's deciding how he wants to uh, assign them for the next pre-release, assuming he has enough people again for the second room. So mm-hmm. yes. we'll, we'll keep you posted. Mm-hmm. So for me, overall, um, just overall the whole thing, I had such a good time. Mm-hmm. Everyone I played were, well, no, almost everyone I played was phenomenal. They were so much fun. I lucked out. Or maybe that's just the majority of the players who come to the store. So. Um, I had the most ridiculous fun time. Step came in and saw me playing one of the opponents. And the two of us, it was like birthdays for both of us. We were having <laughs> such a hilarious time joking and laughing. And um, so I really enjoyed it. It helped, and- I think, that this was a really good set for Sealed, I think. It's mm-hmm. like it, a lot of just mid-range swingy stuff, which makes for reasonably fun magic. It's true. Also, interestingly, a surprising number of women there. There That's were. Right. That was really cool. It was like almost a quarter, I think. Yeah. I don't know if it was that many, but I think, I'm pretty sure there were like ten of us. Yeah. yeah. Which is so nice. So as for my pool, um, I opened it and I was like, eh, it seems okay. So I tried everything. Like I was right down to the wire and it turned out the last thing I tried is what actually worked. So I wound up going white, green dinosaurs. That sounds like an excellent choice. It is an excellent <laughs> choice. I really wanted to do some other stuff, but I just, I didn't have enough creatures in black. My blue, there was a possibility of a blue, white flyer deck, mm-hmm. and I did build it, take a picture of it, so that if I didn't like the dinosaurs, I could try it, but I just did so well that I never did. Um, and there wasn't enough, there was no removal in red. There was mm-hmm. absolutely no burn. There were a couple of good creatures. So just nothing else was an option for me. But um, I did get a Kinjali Sunwing, which is the two and a white for a two, three rare flyer. And creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So thus can't block. Also, it hits artifacts, doesn't it? Uh, nope, just creatures. Oh, okay. So it's like Fun Police Junior. Yeah. Um, I drop it and my opponents are like, oh, are you <laughs> kidding me? It's a really good effect. It is. Especially when you've got something with evasion anyway. So mm-hmm. like... Yes. And it's nice on three. Like, it's it's probably better as a two drop, which I'm sure is why it's not yeah. at two. Because basically you're no- neutralizing all of their three and or four drops. Can you imagine if it was mm-hmm. a two one for two? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't imagine. Boy, it would be great. So, um, I also got a snapping sail back, which is the flash. Uh, five drop, four four, that um, if it's, whenever it's dealt damage, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Mm-hmm. Which is really good. I haven't played with one yet. Oh, it's fun. I got the thundering spine back, which is the dino lord, yes. sort of, makes that uh, makes three threes, and that is oh. super, super fun. Oof. I had a lot of fun with him. Um, I will say the MB- MVP in my deck was my double territorial hammer skull. Oh yeah, that's the one that taps pe- a creature when it attacks? Uh, yeah, two and a white for a, a common two, three ground creature yeah, whenever I can't it attacks. It's a common. I know. Tap a creature and opponent controls. A common. It just made it miserable for my <laughs> opponents. First of all, the creatures are entering the battlefield tapped anyway. And yeah. then after they've untapped, you're just tapping them again. Yeah. And then I have things like Pious Interdiction. And I had a Slash of Talent, which was okay, but not great. Mm-hmm. Um, I wound up bringing in... Okay, so I got the... Um, it's packed away, so I don't remember exactly what it is. But it's the um, vehicle that... F- is a, I think it's a, t- a 210 or yeah. something and then you can flip it and it just Proof becomes four. yeah it becomes card draw so I ran that at first because I knew games were going to be a little bit longer but it was useless yeah. in my deck it just turned out I, it it will have a home in a blue super super controly long game de- grindy deck but this was not it so I traded it for New Horizons mm-hmm. which is the land enchant and when it enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on target creature yep. which is great and then it taps for two mana of any color 
So it just really helped out. I had a bunch of flyers. I had the Kinjali collar, so my dinosaurs were cheaper. Mm -hmm. I had, um... So like the Kinjali Collar is the one man at zero three. Yeah. How did you like it? It was fine. How many uh, dinosaurs were you running? All dinosaurs. So I think I'm running uh, with the exception of no, I had one non creep non dinosaur and that was the Pterodon Knight. Which, which is, is a flyer if you have a dinosaur. <laughs> if you have a dinosaur. So. so for me, the having your create your your oh, and also the Paladin of the Blood Sign stained, which is the bring a friend, mm-hmm, the life like a guy. So, other than those two, everything else were dinosaurs, and so it was great for me to be able to... So you were fairly tribal then? Yep. How did, did you find it was worth it to have, to play to your tribe? Or uh, did you just play the strongest cards and they happened to be Every dinosaurs? creature that I could play, like, I think I have two in my sideboard, two more creatures in white or green, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So, like... Okay. It fits where it touches. <laughs> I mean, I'm running a cobbled wings because I was like, I need another co- playable. And I have a bunch of really big dinosaurs that aren't flying. In this deck, I'm going to throw it in because it's just gravy. Mm-hmm. You know what? Two cobbled wings with one of those hammer skulls. Like, if you put it on the hammer skull, if they could have stopped you from getting in with your hammer skull, suddenly you can continue to do that yeah right so it was super fun so i wound up four and two yep and we'll talk more about what that winds up meaning in a bit so we'll move on to one of you guys how about me because i was running the exact same deck tams was (laughs) well not quite so i was also green white i was also mostly dinosaurs uh the thing though is that i also had two other kind of tribal synergies going on so i had a lot of dinosaurs i was also running the the, the collar, uh, the one drop. Um, I also had the three mana, your stuff comes into play tapped. I also had the seven mana dinosaur lord, all yep. of that stuff. But I also had a Mavern Fane, which is the vampire lord. That seems like a pretty good card. So it's the three mana two two, and whenever you attack with a non token vampire, or one or more non token vampire, you get a 1-1 one, one vampire token with lifelink on the battlefield. So just to be clear, that's one per attack, not yes. per creature. Right. Okay. So I was running, I think, five or six white creatures that were vampires. Cool. Uh, but I was also like Tams, just in that I was running all the creatures I had in white and green. So, yeah. well, most of them anyway. So it wasn't super uh, like I was trying to, to play into these synergies. Um, and the actually kind of my MVP that I noticed was the three mana three two that gains you four life when it enters the battlefield. The vampire. Interesting. Because usually it would just buy me enough time, and it's a good blocker, and it's a vampire, so when I attack with it, with Maverick Pain on the battlefield, sure. I got a vampire. Yeah. Um, and I also had like six explore creatures in green. That sounds so, like a lot. Yeah, so I had, I had the green explorer, I had the white vampires, and then I had the green white dinosaurs, and that was the, all of the synergies in my deck. Um, with explore, it was super impressive to me. I was running... Four five drops and a seven drop and sixteen land, and I hit basically every land drop until turn six or seven. Wow! Because I had two two drop explore creatures, I had two five drop explore creatures, and I had a three drop explore creature. So I'd just go two drop explore creature. Oh, drew a land. Three drop explore creature. Oops, drew a land. How do you feel about those extra lands? It was fine. It was fine. I usually was happy with the counter. Okay. Especially because I feel like I was making the right choices as to whether or not to keep the card on top. Okay. That I saw. So, oftentimes, I don't know about you guys, but I'll just be like, oh, well, you know, it's a creature. This time around, I was like, it's a two drop or it's a three drop. I can do better. I have dinosaurs in my deck. I want a five drop, three, four flyer. That's what I've been finding too. Right? So, um, it was really helpful that way. But I was also usually fine to draw land just because my uh, explore creatures were generally just there as bodies to block mm. whilst I got up to five mana and dropped a three, four flyer or whatever. Sounds decent. Um, and I was also running a cobbled wings <laughs> for the same reason that Tams was. Um, well, partly. So I, I did want the option of putting it on a giant dinosaur. Most of the time, though, I put it on a vampire so that I could get my 1-1 lifelink yeah. token. 
I had one opponent who played the two mana flash guy that gets a counter for each creature that died that turn. Mm. Um, he, it was uh, after he had just swung into me with like his ten creatures, and I had blocked with like my ten creatures. So it was about a nine nine or something like that. Wow. Except I had a vampire alive, so I just was chomping it with my one one vampire life linker because I was swinging in with flying on my three two, three drop or something. Hmm. So it it was just, I think it's fine in some decks. It's not what you want in other decks, but in sealed, sometimes just being able to break a board stall is fine. I've always liked cobbled wings. It's yeah. cheap enough that it's yeah. like yeah, that's that the was thing. the thing. It, it equips for one. Yeah, like yeah, you, you can usually afford it. And I've hear like I agree that mostly you want power and toughness and mostly power on equipment. But in the case of something that grants like literal evasion, like flying. For one mana, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, yeah I had a, uh, an opponent who had multiples of the 2-2 two, two flyer for three that drains you for one. Mm-hmm. And I would just play it and make my 0-3 explore 2 drop into a flyer. Yeah. I was like, damn it. I did that so many times. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually adding flying to a creature adds more than one mana to its effectiveness. Yeah. Like one and a half mana, so... Yeah. Once you've done that to two creatures, you're already ahead on your cobbled wings, yeah. right? So the only downside about my deck was I didn't have any removal. I had one pounce, and That's then I had good. and then I had green removal, which yeah. is combat tricks. Yeah, I was running the three mana plus three plus three, um, and trample I think combat trick, and just a couple other kind of random things like that, and I mean they were fine. I had one opponent try and pounce one of my creatures. And then I pumped it up, and then his creature died. And then you got to swing anyway? And then I got to kill my, one of my co-hosts, and he was very sad about it. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> you know, whatever. So, um, I was sad, though. I opened a Jace, and I opened Star of Destruction, the red destroy a land, deal 20 damage to everything and card. And you couldn't force blue-red? And I, I opened my pool, and I uh-huh. said, I have to be green-white. Because uh-huh. I don't have enough cards in any other color, two color combination to uh-huh. actually make a deck, but I'm so sad. Can I, can I, can I splash double blue for my Jace? No, because I never open Planeswalkers and in, in, in brew releases. Was it Jace that was foily too? Yes, yeah, I, it was a pack foil. foil Jace. So, <sighs> jeez. So, you and, know what? anyways, I did just go with the the two drop blue white or green white beat down deck in the end the jaces i've seen being played have been shrug fine that's like, exactly what i've been saying this whole time you were the one who was super up you were trying to talk me around on him well i, I was hoping that it would be good but i w- i knew that it wasn't going to be terrible i heard a lot, like, a lot of people, people saying it was going to be just this awful. is gross and terrible yeah. and i'm like it's at fine. least it's going to be shrug fine. It's a three like, mana two two. Yeah, at worst, like that's yeah. fine. It's fine. So, so what did you end up going? Um, <coughs> I ended up going five and one, which is nice. I lost to a black white vampire deck that I beat, which is really I, funny. I, I, th- I think <laughs> it was it. I don't think it was the same guy. Was your guy splashing blue? I think so, but I'm not sure. Because I, I'm pretty sure that the guy who beat me also went five one. Oh, that's um, possible. Because our draft friend uh, Mike also played him, and oh, um, maybe it wasn't the same. And one. and said that he he remembered chatting with me about a guy who was black, who who was running a, a particular vampire that drains you whenever you attack with any vampire. <laughs> so it's multiple <laughs> triggers per combat step, and so he played as though his opponent did have that card. Hmm. Turned out his opponent did have that card. Hmm. So, yeah, a... so then he, yeah, won. So that was all right. How about you? Well, my pre-release was interesting. I actually did a video about it, so you could check out our YouTube channel uh, to see the breakdown of the yeah. pre-release pool. But um, I was I was really impressed with myself because I opened a mediocre pool, um, and by mediocre it was just like this it is a three-two pool, you know, like it or a two-three pool maybe. It's um. It's generic. Like, there were strong rares in a color that wasn't supported that was black. Um, And, you know, there was stuff, but not enough to really do anything powerful. So after checking all of the color combinations and asking myself, can I splash three colors? You know, like, (laughs) is is this a three-color deck? I ended up in red-white for the first two rounds... 
and then reconstructed with some conversation from our draft friend Mike um, into red green. And uh, I think the red white had potential for more victory, like uh, explosive victory, mm -hmm. but the red green was more solid just in general. Yeah. And considering that everyone was playing those red green. Um, kill everything with one toughness. Deal yeah, one I mean, I had one in my sideboard. Tams, so did you have one in your sideboard? No. I feel like almost everybody had at least one. Mm -hmm. If I had come up against a good matchup for the red-white, I would have swapped back. Mm -hmm. But I played against red-green, red-green, <laughs> red-green, green-white, red-green, blue-red. Yes. That, that was my pre-release. And I ended up going four and two. So I felt really good about that considering my pool and my deck options were mediocre. Yeah. You know? And he, but here's the really interesting thing. So you and I both went four and two. Yep. You lost to Laura, who was five and one. Yep. I lost to Mike, Mike who was five and one. Well, he went five oh er, he went five oh one. Okay. And then I also lost to the person who wound up winning the whole thing. And then, also went five oh one. And you ended up losing to your other, what was the other loss to? Uh, a four and one, I think. You Five came sixteenth. I came seventeenth, just out of prizes. Yeah, it's tiebreakers, man. It's it's so frustrating. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, you both get the same record mm -hmm. and yep. one prizes and one doesn't. So yeah, that was a little frustrating, but uh, it was so fun. Oh and my gosh! You know gosh. what part of the problem was is that the so pre-release should have been one more round. Like, it should have been seven rounds, yeah. but our, our LGS caps it at six because, honestly, there's a lot of new players or casual players that, that are not going to be able to do that many. Yeah. They don't want to do seven rounds. Even I don't want to do seven rounds. Even yeah. the people who are hardcore are like, oh, God, six rounds. Oh, <laughs> you know, God. Six, I feel good about six rounds of magic. Like, it's that's just like, enough. I think this six was rounds, a yeah. day. I think six rounds is the probably the right number unless it's a GP or something like yeah. that. And you're there for serious magic. Yeah, fun because magic, at the GP after round six, I was starting to get a little drag. Well, yeah, like, well, like... we started at 11. Mm -hmm. Deck building starts at 11. We finished at 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a pretty long day. Yeah. Well, it's like if you go to a store draft and there's a pot of eight, you get three rounds and that feels great. Yes. Like that's a fun evening. Yeah. If it's four rounds, I'm like, eh. Four rounds. It's, it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, but then if you're starting at 11 a.m. and you're like, I'm going for a day of magic. Six rounds is that's two drafts. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but and it but it does kind of squash prizes. Yeah. Because yeah. there are, there were a lot of foreign dudes. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was great. Um, there were door prizes and it was run efficiently. The the judges were super efficient. I think, and super nice. I think my favorite improvement from previous pre-releases is that he pre-drew for door prizes and let you know if you won something before the end of round two which is when door oh, prizes yeah. were so that we didn't all you didn't have 80 people standing around waiting for him to draw names names out of a hat and, yeah. and, and then have to force your way through the crowd to get to the the prize table before the next person has been called yeah. out yeah, yeah. so just sort of i was that. not called for door prizes i went for lunch yeah like <laughs> i won a door prize i was super excited so that was super what'd you fun. win what'd you end up with? i ended up with one of those event decks mm -hmm. the cons of tarkir the cons of tarkir run nice. yes we haven't had a chance to play with it yet but it's really sweet it's got some nice stuff in it so yeah. um all in all i think it was a excellently run event and absolutely it was so much fun and i cannot wait till the next one super it's looking nice. forward Oh, yes, yeah, so. so I ended up top eighting. I don't think I mentioned. Yeah, so. congrats, which yeah. is cool. Which again, the I was five and one, and I was seventh. Yeah. So again, very kind of flat numbers on there. Because if there had which been another round, also why the prize structure was flat too. I think yeah. the top eight all got the same thing, yeah. and mm -hmm. the top sixteen all got the same thing. Yeah, right, I was I was really proud too because my three and one I went. Um, three straight wins yes you were the which, one at the beginning who said oh if i go oh and three i might just drop that was the whole home. thing because i was <laughs> tired and there were so many people and before i knew that i would be sitting in my own little throne of glory <laughs> i was like if i go three and oh or oh and three i'm gonna get one of you guys to run me home because because you had hot, to pack and we had to pack and everything else 
And then I just kept winning, and my two losses were at the end of the day against the super super. That also kind of sucks too, though, because like you go, you're running hot all day, and yeah. then lost, lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. but it's fine yeah, because it was so much fun. So. Yeah. So then we had the first Friday night draft. Yeah. And I was homesick. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. played World of Warcraft and coughed into a Kleenex. Yay. At this point, Steph and I were actually on the upswing because we got sick at the F&M Rainbow Draft slash pre-release. So we were sick starting Monday. Yeah. And then we were pretty much on the road to recovery by Friday and Tams was just getting infected all over the place. Yeah. I know I don't sound like it, but I'm I'm feeling better. It's just... This residual voice thing. Keeps... Yeah, yeah. It's your sexy voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, um... So I only went to the one, but you went oh, to Oh, you both. only went to the one, that's right. Yeah. So there's a 6.30 and a 10 o'clock draft the, on... For uh, the crazies. On uh, release night. You mean the bad idea draft. The bad idea draft. <laughs> yes. So, and what time did you decide that you were staying for the 10, a, 10 p.m. bad idea draft, step? 10 o'clock. Yeah. Well, okay, so no, here's... It's, it's, 8.30? Here, here's how it went. Um, I decided I'm going to see if there are an odd number of people. And I asked after the draft is over, so how many do you have for the late night draft? And I think the numbers were 14. 14. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm out. Because I can go home, get some sleep, because you've got two pods of seven, that's fine. And then... Our draft friend Mike is like, you know, I could be convinced if. <laughs> so I'm it's like, his oh, fault you stayed. All right, Mike. Mike and I are in, and then we had two pods of eight, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so really, you were just doing it out of, the, out of the goodness of your heart. Well, it's partially that, and partially I really wanted to draft, but also <laughs> like and you could I justify would... it because I wasn't there, so it wasn't like extra cost. I would not have felt bad about not. If they had had, you know, an even number, you know, I, I would have happily gone. It home. probably sucks to have the buy at one in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, what did you end up doing, Laura? Uh, first picking a captivating crew and going all in on red pirates. So that sounds pretty Ooh. good. So, yes, I first picked the captivating pirates. I mean, there wasn't that much else in the pack. And also it's a great card. Mm-hmm. It's the four mana. I'm going to, for four more mana, just borrow your ear creatures until the end of my turn. Thanks for that. So, I was definitely in red pirates. I picked up some nice red cards. Um, And then I ended up getting past a couple of blue cards, figuring, eh, blue red pirates, that's a thing. I'll I'll go for it. Absolutely, it's a thing. And then pack two, pick one, getting a Dreamcaller Siren, the four mana pirate in blue, Mm -hmm. that when... You, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a pirate, taps two of their permanents. Yep. And then I said, boy, I'm lucky, because I'm already in blue-red pirates. Yep. So that's basically what I drafted. Did you have any of the looters, the blue-red looters? I did not. Oh, oh well. Um, I ended up, though, running all but one, all but two of my creatures were pirates. I was very tribal. I had two of the pirates' cutlasses, which costs three to uh, put onto the battlefield, and then it equips for two, but when it enters the battlefield, you, for the first time, you can also, for free, equip it to a pirate. And how often, when casting, did you get oh, the Oh, 100%. Equip? Yeah. I mean, I, all of my creatures are pirates. I really like the pirate's cutlass for that. Yes. I think it's And it's a plus tribal, two, plus one, I think. I, I consider it a tribal payoff. Well, the other thing is that I also had the four mana two to go look for an equipment or artifact or vehicle and put it into your hand pirate. That is also pretty good with, <laughs> so, with the cutlass. So basically I had three cutlasses. Yeah. So I always had one out when I wanted it. Cool. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It was super tempo-y. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the Blue Red Pirate deck is I going so. to be super yeah. tempo-y. Uh, I was actually sitting right next to somebody who drafted Black Red Pirates. Okay. And we were across the table from someone who was in Black Blue Pirates. And, and there are three distinct distinct decks, are there? Yes, but the the point is is that all of the pirates create treasure, mm-hmm. and so I had enough treasure that I was splashing a white removal spell with no white lands. Oh, of course. Um, the black red pirate deck was splashing some blue cards off of treasures, and then the black red pirates were splashing a couple of red cards mm. because the pirates are Grixis. So if you happen to get one of the golden commons or something like that, you can usually still splash it yep. because you have treasure. Yep. 
So that's basically how it worked. It was, um, like I said, very tempo-y, so there were a lot of games where it was super close. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there were a couple of games where I got to play Captivating Crew and then just win the game by stealing their giant dinosaurs. Did you ever not win a game when you resolved Captivating Crew? Yes. Oh. I did not. Uh, there are two games. Um, so I ended up going 2-0-1. Oh, okay. uh, me and my third round opponents drew because we were the only undefeated people. Okay. Uh, and then we actually drew because we ran out of time oh. in game three. Mm. So round two, I played a captivating... Or round one... Or sorry, match one of my third round, I played a captivating crew. And I died because... Um, well, basically, he had the five mana 4-4 four, four when it's damaged put a counter on it. Oh, yeah. So I was stealing it. Attacking into your, to one of his now chump blockers, uh-huh. and then it would get a counter. Uh-huh. Then he would attack into me. I would chump block it, get another counter, and then I would steal it back and then attack into his thing right. again. So we were just going back and forth, and then unfortunately I drew um, the two and a red pirate that can't block. <laughs> yeah. And just ran out of time. I really like him. I think he's good. Yes. But... Not in that specific situation. No. Uh, and then in the third... Uh, round, or th- <coughs> third game of that third match, obviously, I, I played Captivating Crew and then couldn't win because we drew. Yeah. But I ended up winning on tiebreakers, so that's obviously all that matters. So for my first draft... Yes. Uh, I was in the other pod from you, yes, right? Yes, you yeah. were. Um, I decided... I I wasn't sure what I wanted to do going in. I was going to stay open. But then, pack one, pick one. I had Kapala, Warden of Waves, and I don't think this is a very good card. It's a seven drop, right? No, it's one blue. Oh, blue. it's the three drop that makes it so that your Merfolk costs more to be targeted. Yeah, so it's a two two for three, and it's a legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. Spells your opponent cast that target a Merfolk you control cost two more to cast, and abilities, etc. So I don't think it's great, but I was like, you know. I'm going to do this once, so I just decided to take her, and uh, or him, whatever, take it, and um, if it was there, then I'd go Merfolk. Mm-hmm. So second pick to Shauna's Wayfinder, that's the 2-2 two, two for 3 with Explore, yep. uh, who is also a Merf- Merfolk. And then Jade Guardian, the 4 mana 2-2 two, two Hexproof that puts a counter on so your Merfolk. So you were Merfolk, Merfolk, so Merfolk. Like, Merfolk. Merfolk up until um, pick seven. Sounds like you got there. And then I had eight, nine, nine Merfolk in my first pack. Okay. So Seems like, pretty good. Okay, we're doing this. Um, and then I get two of the Kumanis speakers, the two twos for a green if you control a Merfolk or have an island. I was already obviously there. Yeah. Yep. And then I got Deep Root Waters. Which is two and a blue. Whenever you cast a merfolk spell, create a one-one blue hex-proof. How merfolk. did you like that? I mean, it sounds like I you never were running. Drew it. <laughs> I Aww. never drew it once. Because it like, sounds like you were running a lot of merfolk, which is the right deck. But on the other hand, how often do you want to spend turn three casting an enchantment? I was drawing seven. I I had seventeen merfolk in the deck, and um, so I figured, shrug. If this is the deck for yes. it, yes, I'll throw it in. And, and then see how it works. I did. I drew it once. On the last turn of the game, I really needed a creature, oh, and dear. I died. <laughs> and that's, you know, it, it wouldn't have replaced a creature in my deck. I probably would have had, I don't know, my second pump spell sure. over it. But eh, it was, I don't know. I thought this was a really great deck. I had the Shapers of Nature, which can put plus one counters on things and draw cards. I had um, the Herald of Secret Streams and the Windstrider and, like, all of the good the Merfolk. Merfolk stuff, yeah. But I just didn't get there. Yeah. Like, it was it was awkward, I so, guess. Games were awkward. So I ended up going 1-1-1 one, one, and one <laughs> with it. A perfect record. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But in my second draft, I, uh, I went blue-red pirates. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I started out strong and then started to falter. Like, the deck started to disappear under me. So yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll just grab all the two drops. And that was my deck. And that one I went 2-0-1 with. Yeah. So, Sounds all right. Uh, I guess draft aggressive. 
Yay. is the answer to this. Yay! So that's, um, that's been our, our experience so far. And then you guys have done a Mitko drop on it. Yes. We did. You should check it out. It's fun. And then, we, uh, we had a lot of fun with that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we absolutely did. And then, in shocking news, I went to Standard Sunday. Ooh. What? Yes, I know. So I used to go to Standard all the time, and then mm-hmm. I just stopped because Standard sucked. And then <laughs> I, 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 dis- I declared to myself that when things rotated... I was going to try and start playing Standard on a more regular basis because because I do enjoy playing Standard when Standard's good. Um, so I looked at a couple of the uh, 5-0 leagues because this was before the GPs or anything like that. So nobody really knew what was going on in, in the meta. Um, and I just went to a couple of shops and I had some trades with somebody else and um, ended up with almost all of a blue-white approach deck. And then I borrowed some cards off of somebody who had recently run a mono-white approach deck in standard step. Yes, thank you for lending me the cards for that, Laura. Oh, I meant thank you for lending me the, uh, the rest of the cards that I needed for mine. <laughs> and then returning the ones I lent to you yeah. in the first place. Um, so I ended up bringing it. It was super interesting. Um, I think it was very well positioned to what everybody else was bringing. Uh, there were a lot of brews, which Jank. was super sweet. Um, but yeah, so I ended up going 4-0 and and winning, which nice. is great. Um, I think my MVP was the one in a blue Aether Meltdown um, enchantment to Flash that gives a creature minus four minus zero and gives you two energy. Just because you, in that deck you have a lot of instants, it's running Glimmer of Genius, it's running four copies of Opt, the new one mana kind of cycling card, mm. and things like that. And also two of the Search for Us Kanta, the mm. one the, one of the new legendary enchantments that turns into a land, mm-hmm. and the land lets you pay three in a, or three mana and to tap it to look at the top four and put a non-creature, non-land card into your hand. So that seems real sweet. It's great. Yeah. So you're leaving mana up almost all the time anyway. So just having the option to turn, you know, their their 5-5 five, five charge or whatever, because like I've encountered dinosaurs and, you know, things like that, to just shrink one of their creatures. I was playing someone who had a, a blue-red prowess type deck, uh, which was playing, like, crash throughs and insult to injury and some blood water entities and the... Just kind of sweet value Yeah, stuff. like, just, just... It was a combo deck. It was pretty sweet. And, uh, so... Anyways, it was it was quite good. The counter spells in the sideboard were very helpful because everybody else had counter spells in their sideboard, so being able to spell pierce or spell pierce was super useful. Uh, spell pierce, very good, by the way. <laughs> um, but I think that the deck's just going to be pretty well positioned in the meta. I mean, mm. there's a bunch of different versions of it that are kind of floating around. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's pretty sweet. I've also got a couple of other decks that I should be getting the rest of the cards for soon. So, like a Grixis Improvise and Salt Eye Energy type of thing. Apparently, I'm just really good at picking decks that are going to do well in GPs because they all did well in GPs. Cool. Or at least similar versions of the decks. So, we'll have to see how it goes. But the si- standard showdown is starting up again this Sunday. Um, I don't know if I'll make it, because it is the Thanksgiving weekend up here in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to make it this week, but I do want to start playing Standard again. I guess I've got to figure out what tweaks I need to make to Ramanop Red, because that's the only deck I've got at the moment. Yeah, it still seems very good. I The only time I've ever played it in tournament, I uh, had flooding issues. Yeah. So. So, you know. But anyways, so that's that's kind of all that we've been doing this week, and I think that's about all we have time for. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we we'll got to get back to moving. We'll be back next week, hopefully with a regular news section and, and mm-hmm. other things now that we're all caught up. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you for spending time with us, and we will talk to you next week. Yeah. Bye.